Hello, Isaiah here, and I'm very excited for this week's PhD Transition Challenge starting tomorrow. If you're in the private Facebook group for the challenge, you're seeing this video first. If you're not, you have to register for the PhD Transition Challenge to get into the group, which is where you can watch the challenge for 24 hours after it. So make sure you get in. What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna give you a brief overview of all five days, okay? Day number one, communicating your PhD value. What does that mean? Maybe you thought, I know how to communicate my PhD value, Isaiah. Do you? I bet you know how to communicate it to other academics, but that's not gonna help you get hired. So you need to stop communicating your value to an academic audience only. You have to learn about communicating it to an industry audience. And what does that mean? It means pivoting your skill sets, using the language of industry. So there might be a bit more business acumen wrapped around your skills, okay, rather than just your specialty or technical skills and you describing them in a way that's understood in academia but not in industry. Because very likely in industry, they are years beyond where you are in academia. Okay, so this is the easiest thing you'll ever learn, by the way. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Secondly, the key words. Again, that language of industry, th these key words, where are you going to find those on the job postings? You have to understand this at a very high level. You should be using 30 to 50 keywords from the job posting on your resume, for example. We're going to talk about how to master this, how to, how to pivot your PhD value to the industry jobs that you want. Maybe you don't know which industry job that you want. That's okay. Right? We're going to help you overcome that analysis paralysis to actually decide on what career is right for you. Right. So the second day is what can you do with your PhD. Remember what it was like to have a discovery mindset, right? When you could, uh, when you used to brainstorm options, when you used to think anything was possible and you asked yourself, what's possible for me? A lot of us as PhDs have let that go. And now we're focused just on the past. We think, what's my PhD background? And we look at every opportunity only through the lens of our background, which is insane. Why? because your background is so niche in academia. Every single week I hear from multiple PhDs saying, Isaiah, would you teach me? I mean, you talk about all these other PhDs except for me. I'm in a unique situation. I have a unique PhD background. Every PhD has a unique PhD background because that's what academia does. It creates these very small niches of specialties, okay? And they think, okay, well, I'm a, I'm a computational analytical chemist. Uh, I'm a literature PhD, humanities, okay, interdisciplinary, social sciences, of course, with all these specialties, life sciences, physical sciences, it doesn't matter, okay, it's all the same. This is just, your, this is the academic language, you're still, you have the same problem. You have to overcome this problem, you have to realize, okay, in industry, they have broad categories, project management, any PhD, for example, with any background, has transferable skills that will help you get into a project management role, or product management, for example, just just off the top of my head, right? Certainly, uh, you know, a scientist role or engineer role or specialty role or uh, analyst role, okay, or researcher role. You have research skills no matter your background, okay? You have to start thinking about it from the perspective of industry, from your transferable skills. Now, we're gonna go over more job titles, more companies, more opportunities than we've ev we ever have before on day two, so definitely don't miss day two. Let me get rid of this. I'm going to go over day three. Now, day three is where things are going to get very, very practical. All right. We're going to start talking about resumes on day three. And then day four goes into LinkedIn. So day three, resumes. We're going to take resumes to a whole new level. Okay. Whether you've tried using uh, industry resume already, or if you have a CV, we're going to say, okay, we're going to get your resume into two pages. We're going to get into a functional format. And then we're going to make it highly targeted more targeted than you, po than you thought was even possible for a resume. But here's the thing, quality matters, okay? So if you do this correctly, you will get callbacks within, well, really 48, sometimes 24 hours, 48 to 72 hours. Imagine that, instead of just uploading resumes over and over again and uh, hearing nothing back, okay? So we're gonna talk about resumes at a very high level. Secondly, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about, well, this is on day four. Both of these have to do with your professional profile. You have to reinvent your professional brand. I call it even your professional story. You have to talk about yourself in a new way. So LinkedIn is next. Your LinkedIn profile to be specific. We're going to say number one. Well, maybe I'll just say A here. 
your profile. This is your house, okay? This is your, and, and this is your, this is where most people are gonna spend their time. Only once you have your house done, can you invite people into it, okay? So then you start networking. Because as soon as you network with somebody, you reach out to them on LinkedIn, they're gonna go, right, to your LinkedIn profile, into your home. So we're gonna spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has made it harder than ever for you to connect with anybody else on LinkedIn. In fact, you can't even send a second message anymore to anybody on LinkedIn unless they accept and read your first message. That's insane. LinkedIn is adding more and more barriers because they're benefiting from weak workforce decentralization. And the people they wanna please are not you, they're companies, right? Who, where do they make their money? LinkedIn Recruiter, LinkedIn Talent Insights. This is what companies are using. So you're not gonna get any help from LinkedIn. A big part of our process is helping you connect to other PhDs in a way that actually circumvents all of these barriers that LinkedIn is putting up uh, against you right now. Now, fifth and finally, we're gonna talk about interviewing. Specifically, we're gonna talk about interviewing traps to avoid. The two questions that interviewers want to know, the two questions that interviewers want to get certainty on from you before they'll hire you, Number one, you're the best candidate for the job. How, how do they know if you're the best candidate? Not by you rattling off skills or academic accolades or your education level, which is what most of us do. How do they know? You wanna give them certainty, okay, over your competency, ability to learn on the job, and really the last one's the most important, that you can solve problems. So you actually have to talk about problems. You're trying to avoid talking about problems. Don't talk about your skills. Talk about results you've achieved after you talk about a problem. You want, they, want, they want you to invite them in the problems you've had in the past, uh, similar to the problems that they have, and how you've solved them and what results you've achieved. We're gonna talk a lot about this, okay? And then uh, the second thing is that you want to work there. They are your number one choice. Like, can you even convince them like with any sort of a passion, emotion, right, which we've really been taught is bad in academia. I mean, do you want it? Do you really want to work there? If you don't want to work there, they're not going to hire you. They're not going to extend an agreement to you, a contract, if you're bored or quiet or unenthusiastic or not even engaged. I'm not talking about a topical enthusiasm, but do you have 30 or 40 questions for on the interview ready to ask them? Are you almost like overwhelming them with questions and your engagement in the company? They love this. Most of us don't do this as PhDs though. We, don't, we, we haven't thought about it. We haven't made an argument for either of these things and we certainly haven't made an argument for why they are our top choice. And every company can be your top choice for one reason because they win in the marketplace for a reason. So we're gonna talk about all of this and much more. I'm gonna share more information than I've ever shared live before. And most importantly, it's gonna be up to date. All right, many PhDs are in very tough situations in academia, unemployed. Maybe you've started to believe that you don't deserve an industry job, you did something wrong, your PhD background's invaluable not valuable or you're not valuable. That all changes starting tomorrow on session number one. Looking forward to seeing you there. As always, remember your value as a PhD and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.